is uh, wonderful for Nancy. I'm not sure where she is. Right here. Uh, I'm, I'm. It's wonderful that she's here. That this reunion. Absolutely. Um, I, I just can't help but say one thing that was just astonishing. It was a beautiful day in Vietnam, but there could be a beautiful day. <laughs> <laughs> and Delmar came back off a mission with Zestoff, and he's really proud to show me he had a bullet hole right through the very front of his helmet mm -hmm. that he sustained. It was an AK-47 round, <laughs> and the lead deflected around inside the helmet and probably fell off. I don't know if he got to, if he found it or not, but uh, that's what I would call close call. That was a close call. <laughs> and that very day, he re-upped for another tour in Vietnam. And I said, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> but, uh, you know, he. I think he always wanted to, Arlen Claywell shared with me, he always wanted to be remembered as a good medic and one who was there to help rescue wounded soldiers and try to save them. But, you know, at the same time, Dustoff was exposed to a lot of enemy hostile fire. It was very dangerous work. And Delmar Pickett, I think, would go down as being one hell of a warrior. Um, he had a lot of missions that were insecure. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, in addition to his aid bag, he carried a grease gun, an M16, and an M79 grenade launcher. Um, I imagine his crew chief and the uh, aircraft commander and pilot appreciated the fact that he was on their missions because he could fight just as well as he could perform his job as a medic. So anyway, Rusty and I had a good relationship in Vietnam, had a lot of fun. He had interesting things happen. <laughs> He slid a guy that was alive into the cooler, and, and I never will forget being in Chu Lai and stopping in to see Rusty, and I said, how's it going, Rusty? What's going on? Said, Gosh, you're not going to believe this. You know, you know how the wars go, and everything's so busy and frightening and everything, and Guy got bagged up out in the field and thrown on a Huey and came to our facility. We rolled him into the cooler. And a, a doctor had to was going on R and R or leave and uh, uh, came over to write the death certificates early. I think when he might have come in the afternoon. Isn't that right? Yeah. He came at a, a different time and pulled that drawer open and saw some color. And, Felt a pulse. All of a sudden, they were calling an ambulance and get him out of there, weren't they, Rusty? So, you know. He blew his legs off. He stuffed out of mine. Oh, blew both legs off? Yeah. But he wrote the doctor a Christmas card from Japan, didn't he? No, he, he, his, his mother sent us a picture of him about six months later at Christmas time thanking us because I guess putting him on ice right away saved his life. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Russ is quite a medic. <laughs> well, anyway. I Roger think... learned how to put in chest tubes. It was way beyond his uh, uh, MOS at that time, I think. Who was? You. Oh, yeah. I, I enjoyed doing that work. I was I knew that was going to be for me when I got there. There. Uh, I enjoyed that, and I worked with some really good medics. Uh, one of them who's never joined us is Jim Rayleigh. He was an incredible guy. Um, my platoon sergeant, by the way, is not here right now at this moment, but he will be here, Sergeant Leroy Haley. And, um, you know, I, I, when I think back on this, I mean, 44, 45 years ago, gosh, I would have never envisioned us all being gathered together here again. You know, I just... It's incredible what we've been able to do. So. Absolutely. I yeah, think everybody. He was in charge of me. He told me what to do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so was Lieutenant Wright. <laughs> Did we capture everybody? <laughs> well, I got about. We should, men we should mention George Waters. Yeah. yeah, that was what I was wanting to do also. <coughs> um, George Waters, 
uh, Roger just went down and Gary went down to see him and they gave him a hat and gave him a big lobster meal and just had a good time visiting with him. And Roger's got it on video on his phone if anybody wants to see it. But he has uh, some kind of terminal cancer, is it, Roger? No, he has a liver. Liver. Late liver. stage liver disease. Okay, he has yeah. liver disease. Uh, but we sure miss him. He was out at, at Kay and Tom's and, and I got to talk to him a couple times. His doctor's like that. Yeah that made some of us guys act like we were John Wayne and stuff, you know? Because we know clay well and stick something in there and stop you from bleeding, or one of the doctors would stick a trach in you and drain your lung, and, you know, we'd be all right, and we'd go back out. And that's what actually this man right here, this guy here is one of my heroes, I'm telling you. I got a little story for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> another guy that's another guy that's not here is Steve Beckett. Steve Beckett was our RTO for six months on the hill. He was night shift, and Krebby's out in the field with that Troop 17th Cal. They get attacked. There's a tank on fire on the left hand side. They got another tank on the right hand side. It's during the night. I think Krebby says around 10:30, 11 o'clock in the dark. And all hell was getting ready to break loose, and nobody had their clothes on. Krebby was in his underwear. Another guy was in his underwear. They didn't have their shoes on. Krebby comes running outside, grabs somebody else's boot. Somebody grabs his boot. Well, one of the guys that grabbed Krebby's boot or whatever got his head blowed off and didn't have his real dog tag and had Krebby's dog tag in his boot. When they shipped him in to Steve, Steve reported him dead because there was his dog tag in a dead man's boot without his head on. So the Krebby was called in dead. And he got on the horn and talked to Steve. And if Krebby told you what Steve said, it'd probably be funny and you could, I couldn't repeat it, but Steve was just in awe. When Krebby called in on the radio, and here's Steve looking at Krebby with no head. You know? So, yes, yes, but that's a little story about Krebby, and he's got a bunch of them, and I think we all do, but that one there was just that one, that's a good one right there, you know, they turned him in for dead, and uh, Steve Beckett right now has Parkinson's disease so bad he can't stand still, he's like this all the time, he can't ride his motorcycle anymore, he's in the advanced stages, as of two days ago, he was operating on, on his brain, they did electrotherapy on him. He has to make adjustments. He has to go back in. They retune him with electric, and it's supposed to make him better, and hopefully that it does. Uh, but Steve, Steve's not here for that reason. And another member that we lost on this very day last year was Tony Cornetto. This time last year, I was on the way to the reunion and I stayed with Tony, and he stayed alive till I got there. And he passed away just hours later after I left. But I was so honored the way he he held on because he knew I was coming. He knew it was a nine-hour drive, and he held on. But I wanted to mention him. That's why my flag is at half mass today. Yesterday, it was for 9/11. But today it's for half mass. Tony Cornetto. Hey, Barry. I'm sure glad to see Olin and Terry pull in. Terry, come up here and tell us what you're into. You're next. You got here just in time. Come on up, Olin. Hey, Barry, just drove in. Come on, man. Eh? No, we <laughs> don't have a lot of pressure here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah come on. <laughs> everybody, has, everybody has been up here. I'm just bringing up the rear. We want to make a presentation to you. Just give me your your rank, what you did, what year you was there, who you are, and give me a hug first. <laughs> Doing great. Uh, name's Ola DeForge, Rutland, Vermont. Um, let's see. Uh, the year I was there was uh, 68, 69. Medic, LZ Baldy. Uh, some of you were on Hawk Hill. Uh, somewhere on Baldy. So I was uh, probably with the first group on Baldy. 
and I uh, worked for myself, real estate, back in Vermont, and uh, here with my wife, Terry. And, uh, boy, they got every road tore up between here and Vermont. There's construction. They're all over the place. Uh, hey, great to be here. Thank you. Anything you want to say, any experience, you're the last guy, you can have an hour. <laughs> yeah. No, not that long. My arm's getting tired. Uh, hey, Larry, how are you? Uh, good. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, it was Larry, uh, Gary, and myself, uh, kind of the three stooges out there putting hooches together. Three stooges? <laughs> <laughs> uh, building hooches. Uh, yeah. we, were, we were kind of uh, jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, there you go. You know, calling us to do uh, anything from uh, working the aid station, building hooches. Whatever uh, demand is. He helped it. the Graves registration a lot. Graves of registration. Yeah. Hey, Rust, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, we were there to do anything, but uh, boy, I tell you, really glad to be here. And uh, not much pressure as soon as you walk in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Paul Griffith, our VFW commander. He's going to welcome you home. Here's your little star. Welcome home. No tripping. Good job. Hey, Gary. Gary, let's do some Come on, it's not even off. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Good. Hey, Angelo. How are you doing, buddy? We should also remember... Can't hear you. Captain Knuckles, uh, who's departed, and we no longer have him uh, at our gatherings. In our mind, we do, but we don't have him here. Uh, Mike Kolosov, who... Uh, was a member of our unit who died a couple of years ago. Richard Orr, uh, who used to join us in our reunions, he's no longer with us. I think Larry Henry especially would like to mention and honor uh, Chaplain uh, Bartley, uh, who was killed in action in Vietnam. Uh, and so are there others that I've missed? Can you think of anybody? But I wanted to mention those those people. We ought to always think of them every time we have this reunion. One of our dust off medics, John Seabeth. John Seabeth, you, you all know, was horribly injured in Vietnam uh, in September of 1969. Um, he, he's still surviving. Isn't he? he is. I just talked to him a month ago. Okay. So Gary stays in touch with him. And. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, like was already said, I, I visited George Waters and plan to visit him again. He's terribly ill. He was a great, great battlefield surgeon in Vietnam. Did a lot of really great work. And I've been friends with him for probably about 45 years. He's in Barstow, California, in the VA home there. Uh, and I, I think I sent an email out to most everybody with his information. If you need it again, I'll be glad to send it back out. Uh, he's, I'm going to go see him just as soon as I get back. Uh, it's about an hour and 45 minute drive for me to go to Barstow from Vegas. Let's uh, give a hand here for our equestrian team back here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Barry for the honor of being here among all you, uh, you heroes, whether you uh, like it or not, you are. Welcome home, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mark for getting these for us. This is Mark from the VA. If you have anybody has any questions about their disability, talk to Mark. What can I say? You bet, right here's the microphone. And now that Leah has gone, um, if you guys get a chance, get, you know, give them a, a thank you because they come out and they do these mounted honor guards. They have a comparison horse for funerals. Um, they give vets carriage rides out at the VA. They do a PTSD program 
out at the VA. All of this she does out of her own pocket. She's a single mom with two kids. Wow. Does not cost the VA a thing. Now, other VAs have those programs, but they pay people to take patients off campus and do this. Every Tuesday, they're out there year-round doing something for us. So if you get a chance, just say thanks. And uh, I'm not with the VA. I have a museum out there, but I'm not part of them. And, but if you guys read the Dayton Daily Disappointment, the VA gets a bad rap. That's a bunch of crap. There's a lot of great things that go on out there. Well, I'm not going to get on a soapbox for that because otherwise you guys won't get to enjoy yourselves. But if you get a chance when Leah and her team come back, just give them a little thank you because I know that will mean a lot coming from you. Great. And hey, thank you. Thank you for your service. Welcome home. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Let, me, let, me add, let me add one thing about the Four Freedom Team. I have to tell you a story. I told you I've been doing a documentary on them and I've been making movies. They told me about a gentleman who was a vet in Vietnam, 67 I think they said, got injured real bad, had to use a walker to walk on. And he was at the Dayton VA. And because of his previous job was, he was a real life cowboy that rode the rangers in Wyoming and caught mustangs and tamed them and stuff. He was bucking the system about going through the therapy session that the Four Freedom did. The program is six weeks long. The fourth week into it, it's my understanding he put his walker off on the side. And the sixth week, if you all remember that big black horse that was right here in the middle, his name was Tank. His name is Tank. He got up on the back of Tank and rode that horse around the VA and didn't need any assistance. Wow. That's what the Four Freedom Therapy Team does out there for us, us vets. So. Please do say something to him. Thank you. Thank you so much.